morning is Sister Nella Sammons from Tornado Apostolic Church. My devotion in this, this morning is entitled, Transformed into His Image. And this will be part one. Tomorrow will be part two. A complete transformation is necessary for us to continue living in Christ. Several years ago, I read a story online about a young man who had a bad crush on a girl in his school. The problem was this young man was not popular. He was small, kind of wimpy, and the popular kids in the school refused to hang out with him for these reasons. The young lady he was crushing on, on the other hand, was very popular. She was a cheerleader, pretty, and was never at a loss for friends until one day she got in a car accident while driving to school. The accident was bad. Her car was completely totaled, and she came out of the hospital weeks later paralyzed from the waist down. The accident and resulting wheelchair made her feel ugly. She ended up going into a pretty deep depression and rarely left her home except to go to school. When the young man saw this, it broke his heart. He walked up to her and he told her, that she was still beautiful to him. He told her that he wanted to take her to their senior prom. She just laughed. What's the point of going to a dance if you can't use your legs? He replied that he was serious and the fact that she couldn't use her legs didn't matter to him. He told her that he would take care of everything, her dress, his tux, transportation, the works, she finally agreed, and he began to prepare. In addition to all the normal preparations for prom, this young man joined the gym. He went to the gym every morning before school and every afternoon after school let out. He was at the gym daily for months until the day of prom finally arrived. When he arrived at the girl's house, she was shocked. This dude was completely transformed. He was no longer the skinny, wimpy kid who asked her to the prom so many months ago. He was now a big, muscular young man. All the time he spent at the gym paid off. While they were at the dance, he was able to physically carry her in his arms the entire time, making her feel like she didn't have anything wrong with her anymore for the first time since her accident. After graduation, they ended up getting married. But the point remains, change is necessary for something amazing to happen. There are different steps needed to bake bread. First, you must harvest the wheat. Then you thresh and winnow. Next, you grind it into flour. And finally, you combine it with other ingredients. This morning, going to talk about the third step, I'm going to talk about grinding the wheat into flour. Grinding wheat into flour is fairly a simple task. All you need to do, need is two stone surfaces. But the wheat kernels in between those two surfaces and flour is the result. You get coarse or fine flour based on how long you grind. In ancient times, flour, flour mills were powered by oxen. They would tie the oxen to a pole and walk them round and round a circle. At the other end of the pole, they affixed a large stone which would ride on top of another stone. These two millstones would work together to make flour. As technology progressed, Windmills and water mills became popular. These worked on the exact same principle, although instead of relying on an animal's brute strength to move the millstone, it used wind or water power. This worked much better for everyone involved because it was cheaper. There were no animals to feed and gave a more consistent product. Once the wheat had been ground into flour, it was no longer recognizable as kernels of wheat. It was transformed into a fine powder. 
In fact, if the wheat is not ground into flour, it's not very useful at all. That transformation from wheat kernel to wheat flour is what made the difference. Likewise, we also must be transformed. As soon as we accept Christ during the harvest and choose to remove the chaff covering our lives during threshing, we begin to change. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, it says, But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So let's look to the previous verse now, and that is 2 Corinthians 3.17. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty or freedom. This is the key. We are now free and therefore have no need to cover our faces. This was a revolutionary idea at the time, especially because covering one face, one's face or simply looking down was the way a person spoke with a king. They were unworthy to look that king in the eye. We, however, are no longer unworthy to be in the presence of God because we are now reconciled to him, thanks to the blood of Christ. Paul was teaching the Corinthians that we should not see God as a vengeful king, but as a loving father. This also answers the question from earlier, who are we? The answer, of course, is we are all believers. We cannot be reconciled to God through the blood of Christ unless we accept the gift for ourselves. We must choose Christ. When we do, we choose the gift of his blood and are only then able to look upon the glory of the Lord. So that's all I have today for part one. And tomorrow I will go into part two. Transformed into his image. I pray that God will bless your day. May the Lord be with you and your family. And I pray you find the Lord for it's too late. In Jesus' name, amen.